gentleman. He has a very busy schedule. He in the gym getting his dribble right. He got to put on his low. Oh, yeah, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> we got none other than the greats of Dot X, man. Peace, uh, peace, peace. God, this means a lot to me, man. I needed some testimony. I needed some, I needed some authentic firsthand testimony. Uh, like I told you, I grew up and I caught the tail end of like the Tony Do the Tony Dorsett era. You know, what I mean, everybody was running around acting like they were Dorsett, right? I know you remember that. Um, I would like you to give uh, give us a little insight and, and, and testimony based on what it was like to grow up in the you know, in the 70s when O.J. Simpson was the man? Uh, man, but well, first off, man, when O.J. was was coming up, man, I just remember him being in Buffalo, and I just remember the games in Buffalo. When he'd be running, there'd be smoke coming out of his mouth, and he had the two-bar face mask, and he had the white juice cleats. And I played football, so you know yeah. I had to get a pair of them juice cleats. They was white, and they had the orange bottoms for juice. You know, that, those were some real live, real live <laughs> joints right there. <laughs> Like real fly shit. Uh, was he one of the? Uh, he was one of the top running backs in the league back then, right? Oh, definitely. Juice was right there. I mean, you know, like I caught Juice probably towards the middle tail end of his career, but he was still getting like a thousand yards. You know, like Juice was. He had nice size with him, and he was deceptively fast. You know what I'm saying? Like right. people would sleep on him, but if he got on that outside, he was out of there. Wow. Did Juice win the Heisman? Yeah, he did at USC. So yeah, hell yeah. Okay, real big business, real big business. Rest in peace to him. I um, I also wanted you to elaborate on the climate on the internet and how people are handling his name, and and, and I want you to interject. You know, the um, the the, the United States Constitution and, and what we are promised when we go into court and raise our right hand and all. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Yo, you, you promised a fair trial. You understand? These are the laws that were set up by these crooked dudes that came here and set it up. You understand? The, the, the law system has always been crooked. It's always going to be crooked. It was set up by crooks. You understand? This this place was, was founded by crooks, so-called founded by crooks. People that came here, Settle, they talk about explorers and this and that. No, they was people that got kicked out of their own countries. And they was like, listen. Go over here to America and see what you can do over here. Do that. You can either go to America or you can stay in this country and be in jail. You understand? So this was right. set up by crooks under their laws. And the thing is, the due law process played out. It played out regardless of how people feel. It played out. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, people got all types of theories. Well, I got a theory. How about this theory? How about she, the, the girl was a coke sniffer. She was sniffing coke. All right. right, number one, she was a coke sniffer. Let's get that out in the open. She was a main coke sniffer. I know this actual factual. She was sniffing coke. You know what I'm saying? Right. Who's to say her and that young white boy she was with? What she was doing with that young white boy, 25 years old? You know what I'm saying? What how, what was their connection? I'm thinking, in my conspiracy theory, like everybody got one, maybe she <laughs> ran up a bill and some of the Mexican dudes came and chopped their head off. You know what I'm saying? Who right. knows? And then we'll put right. that on OJ. Y'all like, no, no doubt. Can you uh, recollect where you was at during the the, the, the the Bronco chase and when he was acquitted and all of that? All right. Well, first, I was a little bit tight at Juice for the Bronco chase because that interrupted the Nick game. You know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> we was watching the Nick game that day, and I was like, yo, oh, dude's just like, yo, OJ's wilding right now. You know what I'm saying? He was just sitting in the back. It, was, it wasn't no high-speed chase. He probably told Al, yo, Al, man. Yo, just drive, man. You ain't got to go off fast. You know what I'm saying? He was sitting right. back with the blam. Al probably was like, yo, just don't knock your head off, man. We'll figure this out. You know what I'm saying? So Juice probably drove. If I'd have been Juice, I'd have stopped at a couple of spots where I would have got something to eat. I mean, we went and got some smoke. <laughs> I'd have stopped at the liquor store. I'd have been like, yo, because I know once they once they put their hands on me, you know, I'm going I'm to be, yeah. be tied up for a minute. But right. we was doing that. And as far as the verdict was, man, it was like, I think we was downtown the day of the verdict. You know what I'm saying? And like, the verdict was racial. It was 100% racial. It was black people for OJ, white people for them. for them. And like, I just remember when OJ got off, dudes in the street yelling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where it was like white women was crying, like, like, like physically crying, broke down, like, oh my God, this is the worst thing in the world. Like, I was like, man, y'all been doing this shit for a thousand years. 
the, the one time that the we went the one time, <laughs> one time, and it was like the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, oh my God, like Juice won. And I remember the brothers just was happy, man, for Juice. But you know, then you see when he tried, then they, I mean, they was going through all types of shit. Like I think they melted his heisman down or something. Like yeah, did a whole lot of heisman. Heisman. Did all right. types of stuff, tried to get his records erased. I'm like, come on, man. Like, you know, and, and Juice was good with white people before that. You know what I'm saying? Juice they loved like, him. He was 100% good. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it, it's it's good that, you know, that because sometimes Juice might have been a little standoffish, but we still embraced him, man, because, you know, he was one of ours and, and dudes that knew about sports and remembered Juice, remembered how talented he was and, and everything he brought to the game, man. So it was good to see that, but it was like, the reaction of the one time when we actually get a win was like unbelievable. It was like yeah. juice was the, it was arguments at work. I remember people was having work arguments and yeah. fights and all types of shit, man. It definitely divided the country and it, yes, it, it, it was blatant. That was um I think I was like 18 at the time or something like that. That was my first time seeing people immediately the mask came off. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely the mask came off. The feeling that it always was, man. This is the wilderness of North America. It always will be, and it always was. You understand what I'm right. saying? So that 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 general feeling permeates. It's never going to be a kumbaya. We all hold hands. Nah, it's not going to be that. We just need to teach our babies, listen, this is how you get along with these people. You understand? Like, we got to we gotta teach our babies. And when you come in contact with these people here, this is how you got to deal with them. Point blank. That's how it is. Uh -huh. What was the gentleman's name? Because when he was, um, we 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 not calling it a police chase. When he was driving in a Bronco, he was on the phone with somebody, right? Yeah, I forgot who was he on the phone with. I forgot who he, I forgot who he was on the phone with. But it was it was real casual, and it and it took up the rest of the game. I remember. I was like, well, that's the game right there, you right. know. So, and it was bug because people was on the highway like, go juice. They had signs up and anything, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People was really into that thing. Was that your first time? Um, becoming aware of Johnny Cochran and F. Lee Bailey and all of these different people? Actually, I had heard the name F. Lee Bailey because he was a prominent lawyer, but Johnny Cochran, that was the first time, you understand, that I was uh, that I was welcome to him and um, and knew about him, man. And, like, he, he assembled that dream team, man, and it's like they got him off. It's, it's, I don't know what would have happened if, if he would have lost, man, because I think, I think that would have been one of the final straws because we... We at the at the final straws. Like I don't know how many more episodes of, of violence against us it's gonna take before the straw to break, man. It's 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 getting ugly, man. Right. They said it was his best friend, a gentleman by the name of Al Cowens. Al Cowens, Cowens. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Al Cowens. Al Cowens. And he never snitched. He never made no money off of it. He never wrote no tell all books. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And that, that that's friend. real friend. That's true loyalty. Blue, true blue, true blue friend to the end. That's loyalty. Um, yesterday, a lot of high profile people said uh, the ugly things like it was everywhere. And shout out to hip hop. Cameron and Mace was like the last people to get a good interview out of OG. Mm -hmm. so, you know, that's a feather in the cap of, you know, hip hop. Yeah. Was, was you shocked at some of the things coming from people to look just like us? In regard, I, I was reading your comments. You need to unfollow some of them niggas, too. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I was reading your comments, man. I'm like. Who is this person? And I looked and seen that you was following some of them. Like, I don't know, maybe some of them were acquaintances of yours. But I, yeah, I, I just was, I'm getting ready to go through my list because a couple of them dudes, I'm like, especially black dudes. Yeah, I was that's like, as true. much struggle as we go through, I don't care if you had a shadow of a doubt in your, if you had a doubt that OJ did, you don't go to that side. No. Like, Yo, he's a murderer. This and that. I told one dude, I said, I hope you ain't got no sons, man. Because I would hate for them to see that their father wrote some real live chump shit like this, man. I was yeah. like, come on. Then Caitlyn Jenner, she, Bruce, Bruce, I'm going to still call Bruce. him Bruce. Yeah. This dude got the nerve to, to, listen, if it was me and Bruce left on a desert island somewhere, I'd run a, it'd be a hole in my hand because I would never, ever, I don't know what type of, oh uh, man, he's the worst. He jumped in, good riddance. I'm like, look at you, you the number one simp. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, the nerve of him. The nerve of him. Exactly. The nerve of, of Caitlyn Jenner. And I don't, the woman of the year. They should have wrote ugliest woman of the year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, what? 
I was like, even even transgender dudes say, yo, that's an ugly motherfucker right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, yo, B. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Somebody that looked like that should be so outspoken considering that he was one of those more high profile transgender cases. That exactly. Was, Lee, exactly. That was my first time coming into or understanding exactly what the transgender process was and shit like because he was an athlete bruce jenner was an athlete right i remember y'all remember the decathlon that year he swam and ran and did all that and then to, just to see like he was harboring that feeling of being a chick then like i don't i don't know man like i don't know man i think they they might put a chip in bruce i don't know man maybe that just was in him man he had a simp gene in him but uh right. You know, I, however he came out, he might be the ugliest transgender, that's for sure. I heard that it was, com I didn't see it directly, but it was comments made by Steve Harvey and Stephen A. Smith. Niggas don't like Steve Harvey. A lot of dudes don't like Steve Harvey anyway, you know what I'm saying? From 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 real dudes that I, that I know, he always been a simp, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you take it from where it's coming from, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, all right, well. If it would if it would be anybody that would say that you line up all the comedians and and you pick around anybody say that I'd be like probably Steve Harvey you know yeah. what I'm saying I I could see him saying something like that I was a little shocked at Stephen A you know what I'm saying but uh you know sometimes he gets on some bullshit too that, like he true. always be talking about his ball yeah. skills I know dudes and they was like I ain't never seen him ball you know then other dudes was like yo he was trash <laughs> yeah, his, yeah he averaged like two points in college or something exactly. like that and yeah. he only played like two or three games I was like yo they dudes that I know that was down there was like yo he was they didn't know how he was on the team that was a Carolina school right Winston-Salem mm -hmm. that's the HBCU HBCU yep wasn't getting no burn, no, no burn down there and, and like you know, he came up about a year or two under me, and that was when programs was going on Gauchos, Riverside, Aim High in Queens, uh, yeah. uh, Brooklyn, USA. None of them dudes, and I knew dudes on all them teams. They was like, I ain't never seen him. Like, he ain't got no citywide jerseys, no Rucker jerseys. I'm like, Stephen, they pull a jersey out. You keep talking that basketball, and you play in the city. Dudes know I played. I could pull out a jersey. I want to see where you played at in the city, in, in a summer tournament, where at. Boys right. of Yesteryear, Citywide, um, PAL. Uh, I, I ain't never seen him play nowhere. No doubt. Somebody said they remember you had a team in Dykeman. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, something that I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about the situation with J. Cole apologizing for the battle? I mean, like, but, but that's this society, man. Like, this, that's, that, that's, that's this society, you know. We, 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 we they, they beef with each other and then they see each other somewhere and don't say nothing, you know, or it's all good. Like, if that clears the soul, I guess I wouldn't, if once it's on, it's on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, if, if, you know, like, I, my main thing would be controlling myself to not let it get to some physical stuff. I'd be like, all right, we'll just keep it, let's just keep it on the, on, on the battling tip. That's how it used to be, you know. Um, right. I don't know, maybe he had an epiphany at night or something. Somebody came to him at night and, and, and made him have a change of heart. I don't know what was going on with that. Right. Man. I wouldn't have done it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You were on tracks with guys like Common and um, I think it was Talib. You was trying to be the best on that track, right? Oh, yeah. I was trying to eat everybody, man. To this day, man, I try any track I be on, I'm going to try to eat your ass up. Regardless, <laughs> it can be cool, but I'm going to eat your ass up. You know what I'm saying? That's the, the same with this basketball stuff. You know, now they see what it is, is all these kids, you know, they, they come up together. They've been playing AAU together, sleeping at each other's houses over the years. When they see each other in the pros, it's all huggy duck. When, when, yeah. when I played on Riverside and Alamo played on the Gauchos, I was trying to put my foot through his chest and he was trying to knock my head off. And we might not talk after the game. And then we might talk the next day, but we, yeah. we was going at each other. Now they just, that's why the league is soft now. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that, that's this whole era, man. Like this real soft era. The mothers take the kids to the game. They buy them these sleeves. When I used to coach AAU basketball, the worst people was the mothers. They was way worse than the fathers. I, I had to tell one lady, she yelled at me all game about her son. I said, number one, how would you like if I came to your job and just yelled at you for two hours? And I said, if you want your son to get better, then take him to the park and stop buying him all this fancy shit. Why yeah. he got to have on this sleeve and some slides and this and that? Then I put him in the game. He do a move. 
and he missed the shot. He's like, but I bopped him. I'm like, but you missed the shot. Have a seat. Yeah, get your ass to the bench. Have a seat. Now yeah. you tell you, and if you don't like it, you ain't got to come back. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. That's the coaches that I came up with. Hell yeah. When, we, when I played on Riverside, if we was late to a game, we come running down the block. And if the game started already, I remember Honeybone was my coach. And he'd be like, at Riverside, he'd be like, yo, have have a seat at the end of the bench. You got here late. Yeah, I'll seat. get you in when I get you in. Yeah, you might get in You might get in after the half or some shit. You know, they, yeah. It was a You penalty. might catch a DMP and be like, damn. <laughs> yeah. yo. And, and, and dudes that was on the team that wanted to play, they'd be like, yeah, I hope this nigga don't come. Mm -hmm. right. So they could get there. Hell yeah. They got this um this thing now called the transfer portal where if a kid ain't getting no run, they just up and go to another school. Yeah, that's that that's corny to me, man. Like that's real corny. You know, that's uh that's that's showing like it you, you ain't really the work really re willing to work hard for it. You get somewhere, somebody bust your ass to take your spot, now you gotta go somewhere else. That's some real sucker shit. <laughs> right. I think um I kind of remember this when I was growing up. They didn't all the way associate OJ with being black or being white yeah. brother. Mm -hmm. They saw probably the women that he dated and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But when um, when that conflict came, we was right there with him. We all came to his rescue and shit. You think that produced a different OJ? Like it was a a, a pre-trial OJ and a post-trial OJ? I, I think it was, man. I think I think it was because everybody knew that. Uh, before that, OJ was the bunny killer. You know what I'm saying? He'll bust a pink toe down fast. OJ's the number one, <laughs> one of the top bunny killers of all time. Of you all know, time. and and when 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 they sat his ass down in jail for a little while, that 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 kind of brought him back to reality because he realized who held him down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a lot of them white associates and business ties he had, they cut him off after that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it was the brothers that was still holding them down. I, I believe it was Al Counts or somebody who said, like, after when he came out, you know, he was taking him to, like, black spots and black parties where OJ had to, he had to get his group, he had to get his mojo back. You know, he had to yeah. learn how to mingle with the brothers again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it took him a little minute to get his mojo back. Right, right. Um, I ended up, I'm, I'm being followed by San Quinn. He's a, he's a rapper from the Bay Area. And he, he put in my comments the name of the, the housing project. OJ was from the project. Yeah, Potrero Hill. Potrero Hill or something like that in San Francisco. Yeah, it's real out there. OJ came from the peas, man. That's why I yeah. said he, he 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 had the gene in him. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just, we just had to rub it back off again, man, and remind him a little bit. No doubt. Last thing, lastly, last thing I want to ask you, what you got going on musically? What you up to right now? Uh, man, well, you know me, I'm, I'm always in the lab. I'm working on some stuff with my man Doughboy. You know what I'm saying? He got he got a couple of like these young boys that's been giving me beats and stuff. So I'm putting something together right as we speak right now. I got a joint that I did with Baron Davis, BD. Called, his rap name is Bart Oatmeal. I got to get you a copy of it. I'm going to a copy of it. Yeah. He got some stuff with him, man. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. Cause I, was. I need I was to hear that, man. So, that's one of my favorite point guards. I need to hear that. And I'm not really surprised that he rapping. Point guards, they be on that type of shit. Definitely. And I was so glad that it was good because when they told me BD, I was like, nah, man. Like, I don't want to have the image of BD in the booth stumbling and doing some bullshit. But he got, <laughs> he, he, he's dead serious with it, man. He's, he's dead serious. That's what's up. Tell my viewers where they can find you at, man. We always going to support you. You've been always supportive of, of my platform, and I really appreciate that. Oh, I'm, you know, Sadat X on the gram. All you got to do is punch my name in. I'm I'm there for now. You know, every two or three months, they find a way to shut me down with <laughs> some bullshit. Right. So I, and I pop back up again, you know. It's but Sadat uh, X Dottie or something like that, right? Yep. Uh, Sadat, I think it's Sadat underscore Dottie. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. They done changed it around so many times. I be forgetting what it is myself. I just be no like, doubt. punch my name up. One of them. I got things. you. I got mm -hmm. you. Dot, I appreciate you uh, coming here and elaborating on the um, the legacy of O.J. Simpson, man. We got to continue to rep him post-death. Definitely. Man, because even the Buffalo Bills didn't even say anything. They act like nothing ever happened. That's know? what I'm saying. That's some bullshit. And he put them on the map, man. He was there when they was the chicken feed. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Dot, I appreciate you. I'm going to get up out of here, man. Appreciate you, brother. Peace. Peace. Thanks.